And now we will finish with our uh, ending keynote or lock note, as some people call it. Uh, it will be uh, Ismail Shahib from uh, Open Bank Project, who uh, does a great work on uh, API regulations all over the world. They follow everything what's happening, and he will give us an overview of what's going on. Hello, Ismail. How are you? Hello. Hi, guys. Good to see you all. <laughs> Good to Virtually. see you. Virtually <laughs> for now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and again, uh, we ask you to present, uh, you know, your work on, on regulation that because you follow that a lot uh, there and we thought it was really insightful for ending that day on financial services and legacy industries that are disrupted by regulations and people and companies and fintechs, right? Uh, so I invite you to share your screen. Sure. Um, the third button below our two pictures. Okay. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. We can see the screen. You can go uh, presentation mode and. Uh, yeah. All righty. Um, can you see the the full yeah. screen now? Presentation yeah. mode. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Cool. Thank All right. You're for Twenty-five Thank minutes. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, uh, Mehdi. Thanks for the invite and uh, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, very glad to be uh, to be here, uh, even though it is virtual. Uh, I guess first of all, I just want to. I mean, as we are uh, virtually in New York, just want to share my thoughts and prayer with all the people in the U.S. Uh, and and around the world who are impacted uh, by by the uh, the COVID situation. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll uh, we'll get to better days uh, soon. Uh, just maybe by way of introduction, uh, my name is Ismail Shaib. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at a company called Kisobi. We're a Germany-based company. I'm actually connecting uh, from Berlin. And uh, we're the company, oops. We are the company, uh, uh, I need to share my screen. All right. I guess you are able to see my screen. So, um, uh, where was it? Yeah, Mehdi, so if you can't see my screen, please let me know. Otherwise, I will just continue. So uh, Tisobi is a Berlin-based company. We're the company behind the Open Bank project, which is a uh, leading open source uh, API solution for banks. For, for the last eight years or so, we've been helping financial institutions in Europe and abroad expose APIs and, and work with fintech developers. And uh, in the last two, three years, we've been also approached by regulators to help them uh, structure and shape programs, open banking programs that works for both fintech and for the banks. And uh, what I want to share with you today is a really little bit of a perspective on how regulators think about open banking, what's happening around the world uh, in terms of open banking and, and what can we learn from that. And I think whether you work in the financial services uh, industry or not, this um, talk or conversation could be interesting because it can uh, it can also help you learn what what's happening in other industries, right? in the financial services industries, and what might be applicable for your industry in particular. So that's for the uh, uh, for the intro. Uh, as I said, the Open Bank project is used by over forty bank customers. Uh, we have over eleven thousand developers using our APIs to build all sorts of financial technology applications. We've already worked with five or six uh, regulators around the world. Uh, notably in, in Mexico, in, in the UK, in, in, in different uh, other parts of the world. Um, let me just start start by uh, setting the ground for this conversation. What do we mean by open banking? Um, so open banking for us is the um, basically helping banks or encouraging financial institutions, not just the banks actually, to uh, open up and share data with authorized third parties but not only sharing data, so transactions and balance and so on, but also banking services, so payment initiation, uh, loan APIs and so on, in a machine-readable format and through APIs. And then, of course, uh, the fourth basic principle is following customer consent. So the whole idea is around how can we empower the end user, the account, the bank account holder, how can we empower these people to share data with third parties um, in in a kind of an API way, right? So that's open banking. Now we we really believe at at Isobi that in the future every bank will have an API. That open banking will be 
sort of commonplace. And we really see that, and this is happening uh, very quickly uh, today, right? Like because of uh, um, a certain number of reasons. And I guess why, most importantly, why we're talking more and more about open banking today, and you know, this is kind of becoming a reality. Uh, I think to me, number one is because customers expecting that, right? So ex customers don't necessarily care about open banking, but they care about all the applications, the fintech solutions, the innovative solutions and apps they can use that are enabled by open banking, right? So we know that customers are using fintechs more and more, fintech applications more and more. We know that open banking is good for the banks. There are a few research that have demonstrated that, uh, that there is a tremendous um, commercial opportunity for, for the banks uh, involved. And then the last reason, and probably the the thing that sort of really sped up the, this, uh, this, this whole, uh, uh, this whole conversation is the regulators' involvement, right? So regulators around the world are uh, seeing open banking as a tool to encourage competition, to encourage innovation, are and are demanding that financial institutions start to open up, right, and adopt open banking. And so how do they do to regulate and demand th this thing? So first thing to know, today there are almost 50 countries around the world who are uh, either have implemented open banking or are considering it, right? Of course, it all started in in UK and in Europe uh, with the regulator. So in the UK, you have a market which is very um, uh, very consolidated with like four banks owning uh, over eighty percent of the retail market. And so, open banking and opening up data was seen as a way to to drive competition and innovation in that market. Uh, in Europe, there was also. Uh, um, the regulators saw the, the the fintech sort of this fintech wave coming and and, and thought about ways to uh, level the playing field and, and encourage innovation, and so they started to um, so they started promoting this idea of open banking. So the, the initial conversation we've been involved with were in 2013 2014. That led to, in Europe, to a regulation called PSD2, so Payment Service Directive um, uh, number two. I'm, I'm sure most of you have heard of this. And, and in the UK, there's something called the UK Open Banking Standard, right? So fairly, uh, and if they took different path, but, but the aim is the same. The aim is to force financial institutions to open up APIs. So that started on, on the continent, on Europe, in Europe, and then started spreading in other countries as well. Uh, and, and today, as I said, like uh, almost 50 countries, we have uh, in Mexico, have, there, there is a fintech law that uh, forces all the banks, all the financial institutions, not just the banks to open up. Uh, there are open banking uh, conversations happening in Japan, in South Korea. There is a, a law also in Australia. So it's really becoming a, a global conversation, a global topic, and, and definitely something which is here to stay. And uh, oops. And, and the reason open banking for regulators become a relevant topic is uh, different reasons, um, I, I would say, but most importantly is because they see it again as a tool to foster a competition, right? In particular in markets where there is a lot of uh, like a consolidated market. So the UK is an example, Brazil is another example where also the, the, the regulator has forced the banks to, to open up. Um, there's this idea of accelerating innovation and, and sort of supporting the fintech community, uh, which, which is underlying the, the, the uh, objectives of open banking. There's uh, an idea which resonates a lot in, in North America around increasing level of security. So open banking is a... Um, so what, what's the alternative for open banking? Well, the alternative for open banking is uh, screen scraping, really insecure, untrustworthy ways to access data. So regulators also and banks sees open banking and providing APIs as a more secure way to access customer data, right? So that, that and, and that's really what has been the driver of that conversation in North America. Uh, improving the customer experience, of course, the, the regulator wants uh, easier uh, um, interfaces and e easier services, more convenient services for, for the end user. And then there are, depending on the country, there are some country specific uh, objectives. And in particular, if we talk about the emerging markets, they really see, so whether that's Nigeria, whether that's uh, Mexico, Colombia, they really see this 
as a, a financial inclusion play, right? So how can the uh, opening up of data, providing APIs, this whole idea is around open banking, how can they drive financial inclusion in countries where most of the people are excluded from the financial uh, system? So if you take uh, Colombia, for instance, uh, I think financial inclusion is at 70%, something like that. So that's that's the reason why it's important for, for the regulator, right? And from a regulatory perspective, we've identified these four um, sort of uh, modes of, of looking at or regulating open banking, right? So one is, and, and they depend on two, uh, two main uh, axes. So whether the, the program is mandated by the regulator or it's market driven, so really left to the market to do. Um, on a voluntary basis, or, or the, the, the the regulator doesn't uh, doesn't want to get involved, and then the second axis is whether that regulation comes with that program comes with a standard. So does all the banks share the same uh, set of APIs, the same API specification, or not? Each bank is left to only to its own device to to come up with the, its own APIs, right? And so from that you get these four models. So you have the commander model, which is uh, the UK model where basically the UK regulator uh, says, uh, you, Mr. Bank, and they, 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 they target the nine largest banks, uh, you, Mr. Banks, you're going to open up APIs in this very specific format, which is called the Open Banking Standard. Uh, you have the architect model, which is the, the European Union approach, where, whereby the European Union says, um, you know, you have to open up. So this is PSD2, you have to open up, but they don't tell you how it's, it's left, left uh, up, up to each financial institution to do, you know, specification wise and so on. Um, then you have the diplomat kind of model, which is really where the, the, the regulator has more of a friendly or market friendly approach. Uh, so the regulator does lots of work to build uh, awareness and engage with all the participants and, and kind of uh, talk about the benefits of, of open banking, but then there is no regulation and there is no uh, standard. And this is really, uh, I think, the, a good example of this approach is Singapore, where MIS, the, 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 the regulator, the monetary authority, has been doing very, very much vocal about open banking since uh, maybe four or five years, but never with, uh, without having a, a kind of a hands-on approach or, or like a, a regulatory mandate there. And then you have the advocate model, which is purely uh, market driven and the market coming together to, to build a standard for open banking. This is what's happening in New Zealand with the, the five largest banks coming together and building a standard for that without regulatory intervention. And I think in the, the US seems like it's, it's going that way as well with FDX and a few different standards that are uh, um, sort of emerging. So the, the, these are the four models that we've uh, identified, and, and you know, depending on the country, you might be in, in uh, one model or the other. Um, the other things that we've worked on with the Open Bank Project, also when working with our uh, uh, with the governments uh, that that we work with, is we developed this uh, Open Banking Canvas, obviously inspired uh, by the, uh, the the business model canvas, and this is really. Uh, just a visual way to identify uh, the 10 key areas a regulator must look at when considering open banking, right? And those key areas are uh, the target financial institution. Who is it that we want to uh, uh, to, to, to get this um, program to? So in, as I said, in the UK, it's only the, the regulation targets only the nine largest banks. Uh, in Mexico, it's all the banks, uh, all the financial institutions, not just the banks. Uh, so who are the target banks? Uh, what's the enforceability? So is it uh, through a de decree from the regulator? Is it through a law that passes through parliament? Uh, is it, you know, well, is it a voluntary program? So, you know, how, how do we want to make this happen? The governance, how do we... Um, you know, govern the program and, and is there is there a standard that every bank needs to share or if each bank does its own thing how does standard uh, how how would the standard uh, evolve and so on what is the scope of api so what are the apis that we need to open up you know in in some countries when you like if you take the uh, uh, europe for instance psd2 the apis that are meant to be opened around access to account information transactions and payment initiation, but if you go to Mexico, they're really focused on 
access to account information and, and balance and so on. So read only, they don't include payments, right? So from one country to another, the scope will be different. Um, then you have uh, the target TPP. So who are the third party providers that we want to target, right? So is that the FinTech companies who are, go who's going to be using these APIs? Is that the FinTech companies? Is that open for other banks? Is it for everyone, uh, you know, no, no matter who, who they are? So it's really important to also figure out to whom this program is, is meant uh, to be. Uh, TPP onboarding, how do we onboard those third parties? How do we vet them? How do we um, kind of centralize the, uh, the, the their certificates and how do we certify them? Risk management and security. So how, what's the security model here to make sure our users are still protected? Regulatory oversight is around, you know, how do we uh, oversee this program? Who, who's doing that? You know, is that the regulator? Is that an independent uh, body? Is that, you know, part of the regulator? So there's some tricky questions. How do we do monitoring for the program? How do we know we're, we're progressing right or wrong? And we, we, we kind of start seeing different approaches here as well. So for instance, there are some monitoring dashboard that you kind of see and, you know, they compare all different, uh, uh, different banks, we, we company we work with, API Metrics, they do that uh, very well, and you can kind of see different banks and how they are performing. Um, and then you have, of course, funding. Who do, who funds this program? And then commercialization. How do you make money out of that, right? And so maybe just to give um, some quick examples, if you take the 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 example of the UK. So as I said, the target banks are the nine biggest banks. Uh, the governance body, there is a spe specific uh, independent body that was created, which is called the OBIE, the Open Banking Implementation Entity, which is tasked with creating that standard and sort of own that standards. Um, it was enforced through uh, remedies from CMA. CMA is the Competition and Market Authority. Um, there is a certain scope which involves transactions, account payments, uh, ATM branches and products as well. And um, what's yeah, maybe also what's interesting is the target TPPs are both AASPs and PASPs. So basically here you have read only, uh, AASPs correspond to read only actors. So people who would just, or companies who would just access transaction data, for instance. PASPs is more read than write. So people, so these are companies who would be able to perform uh, a, a payment or to, to initiate a payment. So to use a payment API, right? Okay. And if you compare that with Mexico, Mexico has only uh, AISPs, right? So only read only uh, access. And, and as I said, the target banks are all the financial uh, institutions, the SOCAP, so small and, and, and larger banks, not, not just the big banks. And it came through a law, basically. They have a FinTech law, which has a, an open banking set to it. So that, that's just, I guess, the, the reason I want to show you this is just to get an idea of what's what's happening out there and, and how you would be able to sort of analyze or think through in a very high level and, and open banking in your in your countries. Uh, what we what we usually do when we work with regulators is we take them through a journey and, and that journey starts with really reviewing what exists already before designing a, a specific or a standard specification uh, for for the country, we also do uh, rely a lot on testing, and you know we we don't. <clears throat> what we usually say is we don't necessarily know what the end users need uh, and wants um, from the from the get go. So there is always a period of um, testing, a period of uh, piloting, a period of sandbox environments where you know all the actors come together and. And sort of try to improve on the standard. There's of course promotion. You know we're big fans of hackathons and these sort of things. And then it's it's a continuous program, so it always needs to improve and, and to be monitored. Um, in terms of recommendations, and I will end uh, on on that. So what we usually kind of advise our regulators is that you know most important is know your why, right? Well, what's the objectives that? You, well, why do you want to do this? And do you really need open banking? In the first place, right? So, it, is it whether whether you want financial inclusion or whether you want increased security? You'd have really different programs, right? Um, engage with the end user. Uh, this is something we mostly fail to do in the UK, in Europe, at the beginning. Uh, you know, like really getting early on, starting conversation with end users around data, data sovereignty, and 
and, uh, and uh, the benefits of open banking, the risks of open banking. Engaging with the fintech community, that's also something that regulators do not do, unfortunately, uh, too often, or, or they, you know, they bring the, the fintech at the end of the process, whereas what we believe in is that you know, the fintech are going to be the users and it needs to be, um, they need to be engaged early on in the process, right? Through sandbox, through you know, different means. Uh, forget about the garage startup myth, and what I mean by that is that you know when we talk to regulators when they are they have some apprehensions um, thinking about open banking, they would say, yeah, but you know like um, if we have open APIs, everyone can use them, and then there there is this sort of uh, two guys uh, startup in their garage, and then you know they they are going to break the whole bank and so on and so on and so forth. And and the reality of it is that you know the of, of open banking, the TPPs that will be using um, APIs from the banks are going to be actually fairly large financial, fairly large companies and companies who have security protocols in place, uh, companies who are legit, you know, quote unquote. And so, and and you you see that in the UK, you see that in Europe. These are, you know, the the first users are either the banks, the other banks sort of doing account aggregation. Or account aggregator, you know, companies which are really well-funded uh, companies who are uh, like uh, credit bureaus. So really, companies who are established, right? So it's not we're not talking about you know a, a one-person startup here. Uh, the, those companies who will be using the APIs are are actually legit. Standardized. That's a, that's a very important recommendation. I, I would say well, what happens if you do not standardize at country level is that there will be many con many standards sort of uh, popping up. Um, case in point, Europe, where we have I don't know each country has maybe two, three uh, standards. We have one at the Open Bank project. There's a Berlin Group. There's one in France. There's one in Poland. It's a kind of a big mess. Uh, it's not necessarily fintech friendly, and and so kind of mutualizing all these efforts is probably something uh, beneficial. Design for post compliance is another important point. Uh, basically, what we've noticed is that all the banks, when there is a regulation, you know, kind of uh, open banking regulation, all the banks will uh, be very busy just complying and, and, and limiting what they do to, to pure compliance. So uh, I think designing a program where um, there, there is a little bit of flexibility and openness and, and ways for the banks to monetize and so on is, is very critical. And, and it's good to, to, to have that uh, in, in the design, you know, not, not a kind of a post thought. And then of course, lastly, uh, learn and adapt. Um, I think we're all learning here and no one really has all the, the answers. So it's very important even for the regulators to, to, to take a, a very agile approach to this and uh, to have, uh, to listen carefully and to see what's happening in, around the world. There are programs, um, you know, in Brazil, in Mexico, in, in Europe, in Australia, in Hong Kong. And, and I'm sure there are lessons to be learned from, from all these countries. So I would really encourage also this kind of list, active listening and, and, and learning from others. So uh, that's basically what I have for you uh, today. I was just maybe before, uh, before starting this, uh, this um, talk, I was thinking, what are the uh, the recommendations or the lessons learned for other industries, and uh, that 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 we that other industries can learn from banking? And and to me, I think these the, the, these recommendations still are still valuable. I think standardization is key. Um, I think another important note here is that um, regulation really accelerates things, right? So it's a it's a tremendous acceleration. I mean, it still things takes time, of course. Uh, but uh, but but regulation accelerates things. So uh, I think if you're in, in your industry, we start to talk about regulators being involved and, and something like that. I think you would have to take that really seriously and things can change uh, quickly. So start engaging with third parties, start, uh, you know, running hackathons or, 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 de or deploying sandboxes. So start getting ready before you have the kind of the fine print of the regulation. Um, and and uh, and always see beyond the, the compliance. You know what is it? What are? Uh, how can these APIs and these models works for us? And I think Mehdi, you 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 nailed it when when you were saying you know what does um, 
what can the 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 apis do for the business not the other way around uh so i think these are you know just kind of briefly some of the learnings uh but i'm, sh I'm sure there are others but happy to take uh some time for questions if, if any yeah, uh, yeah. Then, thank you very much yeah thank you ismail thank you for this insightful presentation we have time for one question before going to the uh live live uh, chat uh, with the dj actually uh Ooh. i will explain later we after that we will go uh for the people interested on a platform uh, with the chat but i will explain last, uh, last, th that later one question about regulation quickly is uh, do you see any different impacts depending on how the regulation is made you showed mexico you showed uh, europe which is a lot, little bit more open uh, in, in the design than uh, open making UK that is a little bit strict about what you have to do, or in India where things are more specified. Uh, do you see more adoption on one part compared to the other? Well, I, I think it it goes back to, you know, know your why, right? So it, it really depends on the objective that, that the, the, the regulators set themselves to do. Uh, I think that's one thing, right? So in Mexico, really, they care about financial inclusion. So the, the the end result will be very different from what's happening in Europe because you know if you care about financial inclusion, it means you need to include uh, MFIs, you need to include microfinance uh, institutions into the target uh, financial institutions. You need to you know to include the sort of cooperative banks because they are dealing the most with with the uh, with the unbanked people. So that's you know different from UK where the UK they want. The regulator, the CMA, wants to see more competition and wants to kind of uh, break this uh, oligopoly, you know? And, and so they say, okay, only the nine biggest bank will have to do this, right? So I think, I, I think that's, not, that's one big point. The second is the, the speed of adoption is different, right? So if you have, uh, again, if you have the UK saying, uh, you know, the nine biggest banks first, of course, the rest of the industry might follow, but, you know, that might take, a little bit more time in in australia they say the four biggest banks in year one and then year two the the rest of the industry so i think that has an impact as well and then uh and then the the whole conversation around standards right so in europe again i i, I think that's that's not necessarily a good thing but we have this proliferation of standards you know coming from from each country and so as a fintech you have to connect to each bank individually, or you have to connect to one aggregator of APIs of all these standards, right? And so that might, you know, sort of hamper innovation, right? So why not having one standard for all the banks and then it's easy to, to move from one bank to another? And even that actually, to be honest, like even that model is tricky to because like it's never... Um, the, the transition is never sort of uh, kind of transparent and seamless. There's always work to be done, and we see it in the UK actually. But still, it's better than each country because then we are each country having its own standard. Because then we're losing time to, at some point, for sure in Europe there will be one winning standard or two. But you know, it, it takes time to get there. Yeah, thank you very much, Ismail, for this uh, uh, this this nice sum up of a complex uh, topic. Uh, thank you very much. So now it's time to wrap up day one. Sure. And I will share in the chat, like here. Thank you, Ismail. I will just share in the chat the platform we will use for hanging out for the one who wants. Maybe talk to speakers, talk to other people in the, who are still there. Uh, it's called Spe Special Chat.